Welcome, my name is Nick and this is Nick's Fort. And today we are talking about B-roll and how to approach filming that like a professional cinematographer. I'm actually going to break down shot by shot an approach for filming a scene. And I'm also gonna share why we're gonna film the footage in this particular way. And two things before we get into it. One, B-roll is supplemental or additional footage that complements the main A-roll footage. And that A-roll footage could be two camera interviews, vlogging, stuff like that, and the B-roll is everything else. Two, this approach for filming B-roll applies to almost every single kind of creator for video or filmmaking. So if you're making wedding videos, doing corporate stuff, if you're making featured docs, or if you're filming vlogs or travel videos or lifestyle, it goes on and on and on. You can apply this approach to filming your B-roll and it's gonna help you tell a better story, walk away with better footage and save you tons of headaches when you're editing. So it's super valuable for everyone. We're gonna begin our journey of B-roll using a method called the five shot method, which Michael Rosenblum developed for get, gathering documentary style footage and walking away with the basics you need to tell a story. When you're doing this kind of content, the first shot you're gonna get is a wide shot. The main goal of the wide shot is to show where we are. We can see that Tyler is up on this mountain ridge and he's assembling a drone and we know where he is. It's super important to have that shot for any situation. You need a wide establishing shot and, and just doing one locked off like this on either handheld and steady or, or on a tripod, don't pan, don't tilt, just get a simple, simple wide shot if you don't use it, that's fine, but having it is super, super useful. The second shot we have here is the close-up action shot. We have a close-up of Tyler putting the blade on the drone here. The purpose of the close-up action shot is to showcase what is being done, okay? So you have the wide shot, we establish where we are, now what is happening in the situation? Where, what? So those are the first two shots you get. And you have an opportunity here to, you know, have a nice shallow depth of field and you can kind of make it a little more cinematic, but this is, you know, the second shot you want to get. The third shot that you're going to try to get is the close up of a face. So here we have the shot where we have Tyler's face. You can see that he's working on something, which we know is building his drone because we just shot, you know, this action shot. And the purpose of the close up of the face is to show who is doing this. The next shot that we have is the over the shoulder shot or the POV shot. I love POV stuff. Link above to like how I do my POVs. But for this example, I actually did an over the shoulder shot because you know, I mean, why not, you know, be diverse. Um, but the idea behind the over the shoulder shot is that you're going to combine the idea of, of who is doing this, so your close-up of the face and the close-up of the action, what they are doing. Up in the top right here, we see Tyler doing it. And then down here, we see what he's actually doing, which is preparing this drone for the flight. The fifth shot in the five shot method is, is really the first opportunity to get a little bit creative beyond you know the structure that you have. And it's the alternative shot. And when you do this shot, you want to be uh, motivated in how you film it. You don't wanna just go completely rogue. You wanna try to do something that's different than what you've already done, but it really ties into the story of that scene. So for this here with Tyler, I decided to do an alternate shot where we have a bit of a different lens here. So if we look at the wide, we can see, you know, this is, this is what that looks like. And then if we look at the alternate shot here, you know, we're getting a lot more depth of field. We have this wildflowers from the mountain up in the foreground, and this is blurry in the background. And that kind of, that lends itself to the scene. And he's still working on the drone and kind of, you know, finishing touches to prepare for the flight. So those are the basic five shots. You do those, you have your stories, storytelling building blocks of B-roll, okay? And then now we get into the fun stuff. And th these are other shots or techniques or methods for getting shots that I like to use when I film a scene. And the first one is called inserts. And inserts are basically everything outside of the subject in the action that tells the story of the environment around it. So if we look at this right here, 
our very first insert shot. We have a stabilized shot of this ridge line and it's showcasing where we are. Doesn't relate to the talent or the actual drone or anything like that. We have another insert here where we have the trees in the area, some people who are up on the ridge, and then another insert of the wildflowers here. You can go ahead and film a ton of inserts if you need them. It's gonna kind of make your story a little bit more robust and in the situation, and you can paint a picture of what's happening around you and the actual actions and the people in it. If you have a Steadicam, a gimbal, um, that's gonna be the next thing that we're gonna do here. So I actually filmed Tyler, you know, flying, taking off the drone here and on the gimbal. And I really love that. It's really nice and smooth. Just having these gimbal shots is gonna add a little bit more diversity to your ability to tell your story. You know, it takes a little time to set up the gimbal and stuff. So that's why it's kind of coming down the line. It's not one of the first five that you're gonna get. It's gonna be a little bit after the fact, but get gimbal shots, they're amazing. And then the next shot that we're gonna do is a favorite of mine. I use it in my commercial work, in my doc work, in my YouTube work. I, it's the hero shot. I love hero shots. And basically what that is, is a way to showcase your subject and really like empower them and lift them up and like make them look like a freaking badass, which is sick. I'm gonna do a couple different takes on the hero shot here and you know, make sure that we get it how we want it. Maybe do a take where he's looking down and he looks up. I really like that one a lot. That's that's awesome. And then the next shot we're gonna do is the rack focus. And I made a whole tutorial on rack focusing and kind of like the ins and outs of it. So check that out if you haven't already. In this situation, I had him holding the drone up there. He's holding it and I'm rack focusing in and out. Getting a couple of those rack focuses with the situation and the action that's going on here. I sort of looked at the rack focus and as an opportunity to show off the drone that we were filming. So the next shot I have here is called a super zoom. I don't know why the robot sounds, sorry. Anyways, it's a super zoom. I film them frequently, I use them infrequently. I think they're really, really cool, but sometimes, most often, they don't turn out as good as I wanted to, to have them turn out, uh, but they're still rad, okay? So I'm not gonna dive into what it is too much, but basically, when we are looking at a super zoom, you're gonna be wide and you're gonna be in slow motion and you're gonna zoom into the action. And that's it, that's the super zoom. And then when you do it in post and you do it right, you're gonna have this effect where it's slow motion and it goes and you land right there. Or it's, you know, here's another example, you're out and and we're there. And then he moves away, the drone. Oh, so cool. So super zooms are like super rad, okay? I should do a tutorial on them, and uh, if I remember, I will put the link up here. It won't be there now. Um, maybe it'll be there now, depending on when you watch this. I'm gonna do a tutorial on them at some point. All right, we have two more, two more, and the next one is slow motion. I'm not gonna dive into it too much, but basically you wanna get some slow motion shots that are not necessarily like on a gimbal or super zoom or any of that stuff, just kind of like a general slow motion footage. If you're filming slow motion, there should be an action. That's kind of the basics of shooting slow motion. Uh, I don't shoot slow motion for everything. I like to use real time also, but slow motion can be amazing. So we have a slow motion shot of the drone taken off here. And then we have a slow motion shot of the flowers blown in the wind and that's beautiful. And there's the drone hovering right there. And then the last, but definitely not, not freaking least is Ariel's drone footage. Oh, that stuff is just the gold dusting on top of any video in my opinion. If I'm not able to fly my drone and incorporate that into a video, I get sad. So having the ability to do a drone shot is amazing, especially if you're in a really cool location like this. We we. We had an amazing spot on this ridge line where we could really get some really cool drone footage and it, it, it amps up what's happening so much. I think that having a drone and having the ability to get drone footage is uh, awesome for, for your videos. And so th those are kind of the, the go-tos when I'm gonna go somewhere and I have enough time to film everything that I wanna film. There are a few that I didn't include that I do really like to do, which is a time-lapse or a hyperlapse. Pan swipes are always super, super fun. 
Um, I'm probably forgetting some other ones, but there's definitely some more techniques and, and different things that you can do with your B-roll uh, that I didn't dive into. The big takeaway here for everyone is if you go somewhere and you use the five shot technique and then you add maybe, you know, two or three more of these other techniques into filming more B-roll, then you're gonna walk away with the ability to tell a good story. And that is what is so important when you're making videos. How many times early on when I was filmmaking and making videos did I walk away from something and be like, oh, I really wish I had a wide shot of the beach that I was filming that on because now I just have these like really cool bokeh slow motion shots of the water and playing and whatever, but it doesn't make any sense because I don't, no one knows where I am in terms of the bigger picture. So take those five shots and get them every time and then have fun with the rest of it. And if you like this video, give that thumbs up a clickety clackety. If you aren't subscribed, you can subscribe below, pop on the notifications, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you have any comments or questions, drop them below. Also, I'm really getting into the IGTV thing, so if you wanna check out my IGTV, it is at Nick's Fort, and I am answering your questions on there too, so if you have questions, go drop them there. All right, guys, uh, that's gonna do it for me. Peace.